Hello Sealers and welcome to this after action report, battle report uh, of Cocking Up Through the Mud and the Blood which is the First World War version of Chain of Command. Uh, I've got it here in the Play the Game supplement that you can buy on the Two Fat Lardies website but I've got a couple of copies of it elsewhere. I think it's in the 2014 Christmas special, Lardy special as well. Uh, and basically what it does, it takes Chain of Command, the Second World War, game turns it into a first world war game as well so it's um it, it kind of it, it works because chain of command came off the back of through the mud and the blood which is the two fat lardies large skirmishes first world war game uh, so it's kind of retrofitted it back to what it actually originally was anyway uh, i've played it several times there's a few videos you'll find on the channel uh, of the first world war version of chain of command i really like it a lot but i've been wanting to play this game in particular this is a game set during uh, the third battle of ypres also known colloquially as passchendaele even though that was the very last part of the battle in uh, october november time this is set in 1917 uh, and I just kind of wanted to have a bit of a, an open board with uh, a, a, a bit of a mud pile in. Through the mud and the blood there is a specific rules for using abysmal terrain and things. I'm not going to be using those in this game uh, because I asked on the channel uh, what people would prefer to see, whether they prefer to see mud and the blood or uh, chain of command and the votes came in uh, just on chain of command they just picked it it was uh, chain of command all the way for a bit and then they kind of just just got to the uh, at the very end um, the mud and the blood kind of came up but chain of, cam chain of command won so uh, that's what you're getting uh, I've kind of also based this a little bit as well on uh, Michael uh, now I'll see if I can sp uh, say his name out loud. I never say it out loud. Michael uh, Lo Cicero, uh, an American historian. He wrote a chapter in this, which is The Darkest Year, which is edited by Spencer Jones. About 1917, the British Army on the Western Front in 1917. Well worth getting, actually. Uh, published by Helion, uh, as is the other books in this series as well, from 14, 15 and, uh, and 16. But this one is called Discredits on Those Concerned, a German trench raid near Luz. This is the 5th of January 1917 and the duty of lying. It was about, really, it's about the uh, the aftermath of the uh, the raid that went really badly for the British. The Germans got into the British lines. But it was a large-scale raid. It was almost company level. I think it's about 120 Germans in it. Uh, they attacked into uh, British lines that were dug on the edge of a crater. So I wanted to use my craters that I've built recently. Uh, and basically just swarm through the British lines, capture a load of prisoners, there was hardly any resistance. Now, I've, I've based it on this, <laughs> because I'm setting this in September of 1917, as I say, during the Third Battle of Ypres. At this point, the German doctrine, as was into the Second World War, was to always re-counter-attack re any ground that they lost, and that's what they're going to be doing in this. So we're going to have a German attack on some British forces. The British forces have attacked, but are now spent and are spending some time digging in. So it's going to be a bit of a broken-up platoon for the British, and I've kind of put together some scratch forces, whereas the Germans are using similar to Sostruppen tactics. Not exactly Sostruppen tactics, because they don't really come in until 1918, but uh, something similar uh, using a lot of firepower and bombers. I'll take you through those figures anyway, but I just thought it'd be interesting to have a bit of a, a relatively open table. Uh, the shell craters are going to be co causing cover, uh, and then see if the Germans can actually break into and capture the British lines and get their land back, basically, uh, for what it's worth. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll show you the table, I'll show you the, the forces involved, and then I'll play through the patrol phase and we'll get on with this game. So as I said, this is a table looking from the Germans' point of view up towards those British lines here. You see we've got these large craters. Uh, these are going to be cover. These are actually going to be heavy cover if you're in them. The smaller craters, they are also going to be cover. They'll be light cover if you're in them or between them. And then we've got the trenches over here which are again, going to be heavy cover. These are currently held by the British. As you can see, these are pushed forward and they've dug in here. We've also got a couple of German uh, bunkers as well. However, these uh, have gone out of use. They can't be entered, uh, but they still provide cover from behind them. Uh, so I'm going to be using them as that really. They'll be heavy cover from behind, but you can't actually get into them because they're, uh, they're f they've been bombarded over the last few uh, the last couple of weeks. Over here we've also got a forward sap as well, which has got a couple of British sentries in it. And if you can make those two guys out there, it's a small team. Now, <clears throat> these guys are on watch. 
and the idea is uh, I'm kind of changing the rules a little bit they are starting on the table and they will the, the British will only actually be able to enter the table once the sentries have been alerted to the Germans and the way that the Germans alert them to their presence is either they fire at the sentries or the sentries are activated on a roll of a one so that's how that's going to work just though it's something slightly different it means that the British aren't going to get to deploy immediately uh, because the Germans are attacking uh, just at dawn so it's a bit of a surprise attack for them for their Angriff so that's basically the table as I say quite open but the Germans have got to push up in the patrol phase the Germans are going to have D3 moves immediately They've got four patrol markers. The British go. Uh, the British have got uh, three. They will always have one jumping off point, which is going to be that central point in the trench as well. So, uh, and then they'll set up three more set, uh, jumping off points, but they'll always have one in the trench. Uh, whereas the, the Germans are going to have three spread about on the table. Okay, what I'll do is I'll show you the forces involved, and then we'll get on with the patrol phase. Okay, so here are our forces. So we've got the Germans over here, the attackers against the British defenders over here. Uh, the Germans, as you can see, these are their jumping off points. I'll put those out in a second. So we've got a Leutnant and a Fizzvelwebel. Uh, that's the German HQ, so uh, quite a bit of um, uh, command ability. They've also got a couple of scouts and runners, which they can turn into a team if they want. And then they've got four group. So the first one is the assault group here. This is led by one Gefighter with two rifles and six bombers in it, men trained as bombers. And this is the same as uh, as Vi as well. So that is also a Gefighter, two rifles and six bombers. Then over here we've got two LMG groups. So they've got Group Ein and Group Zwei. Uh, and this is a Gefighter uh, with six rifles and an LMG team of two men. So it's either uh, an MG 0, uh, 0815 or a captured Lewis. Makes no real difference in the rules. One thing to mention is I am going to be using the Through the Mud and the Blood uh, rules for machine guns that is if they run more or more ones and sixes they will be jammed and they will have to unjam them I'm just going to do exactly the same as in uh, in through the mud and the blood over here we've got the British so these are a little bit battered so what we've got is we've got a lot uh, our lieutenants and also our sergeants as well and then we've got a rifle section this is made up of eight men and a corporal so that's about the only thing in here that is full they have a bomber section, uh, this is made up of one corporal, it's normally made up of six bombers and two rifles but here we've actually only got three men trained as bombers because these have been in the attack they will have lost some men previously, also this is just a scratch force really to try to get on to, to fight against this German attack so it's not a full platoon. Uh, and then a couple of rifles in there as well. They've also got one scout and runner the, as their support. Oh, I didn't mention uh, the Germans have got a flamethrower for their supports as well. Uh, over here, the British have got an LMG team as their support. And that's a separate team. We've also then got the rifle grenadier section. However, this is very, very badly mauled. It's basically four rifles and one rifle grenadier. And then finally, we've actually just got a team of LMG, which is led by a corporal over here. So they've got, they're going to have two LMGs if they can get them on the table, uh, two separate teams basically. This is going to be operating as a team rather than a section. Anything with less than five men is going to be a team. Uh, well, it's going to be a section when it comes on the table and if it, if it remains, even if it gets less than five men in it, it's still going to be a section. If it comes on the table with less than five other ranks men, it's going to be a team. So basically two teams of LMGs there. That's kind of how I'm going to work it. So what I want to do now is just roll for their force morale. So the Germans, I'm actually going to give them a plus one uh, because they are attacking and they are, uh, you know, they oh well, there you go, straight up to eleven. <laughs> uh, the British, I'm just going to roll it as it is. So let's see uh, what's theirs. A three, a three for uh, force morale is a force morale of nine, which kind of ties in with them being a bit tired as well, doesn't it? So what I'll do now is I'll play through the patrol phase and we'll see where we get. Well, actually, let's see first of all how many moves the Germans get. So it's a D3 first of all, half it, so they get three, three free moves immediately for their patrol phase.
Okay, so that ends the patrol phase. So let's have a quick look. Uh, the Germans, they've got two on this right hand side here. They've tried to push them as far up as possible as they can get. They are quite close to that big crate, which is good. And then their third one is a bit further back, back here, but it is protected by that pillbox at least. They'll probably be looking at trying to get this up the table if they can as quick as possible. The British, on the other hand, are very clumped. Uh, they've got one in the large crater one at the back there and then just another one in the trench and as I said they've already got one here anyway in the trench so they've got four jumping off points and that's basically the uh, jumping off patrol phase so let's get started the Germans get the first go because they've got the highest force morale and uh, let's see if they can capture these trenches right let's get straight into it then with the Germans with their five dice we get. so we've got uh, two fives two chain of command points straight up uh, two fours and a two so let's just put those chain of command points in for them mm, so that's two senior leaders and a section uh, do they want to get at least a senior leader on with a section I think they're going to actually I think they're going to bring their Fitz Veldverbal on he's a uh, level three so they'll bring him on and they will get their first LMG group on so I'm just going to put those on the table and we'll see where we go from there. So these have deployed from this forward jumping off point here. These are with the LMG team. I did, well, I put them behind this, um, basically behind the uh, the crater. They can't be seen. It blocks line of sight. It's too big. I did think about putting them on either covering fire or overwatch, but they can't actually see anything. So what I'm wanting to do is get probably get them into the crater at the front and then put them on uh, covering fire onto that trench at least. So they're, uh, they're doing something, but I just wanted to get them on the table at least and we can see where we can go from there. So that ends the German turn. They've got nothing else they can do this turn, so let's see if the British can do anything. So as I say, we can't do anything until they roll a one, which is their sentries who have been alerted. So, well, there we go, we've got a one in there. We've got two ones. So they can actually begin to deploy. And they've got two sixes as well, which is a, uh, that's good for them. So they've got a five, chain of command point two sixes so that's a second phase for them they've got those ones they can't actually see anything or do anything with that section though um, so basically I'm just gonna roll again but it means that they can now deploy because they got that uh, sorry not section the team so they can bring some oh there we go uh, three sixes uh, and a five so a five is a two uh, and another one as well so that is definitely a uh, uh, another phase for the British so the three just ends the turn, three sixes, but it does mean that the British get another phase. So let's have a look at that. Let's have a look in it. Okay. <laughs> They're getting loads of phases. Uh, two more chain of command points. So that takes them up to four. And a three, which is a junior leader. Right, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, what I might do then is actually start to man that trench. Uh, we've been alerted to the Germans that are coming, or do we man, yeah, we're going to start manning the trench and I think we'll get the rifles on straight away, I think that's the first thing to do. So with their lucky dice rolling, the British have basically manned that trench and because they've brought on a junior leader with them, I've actually put them on overwatch as well, so they're covering quite a large area over here, so that's going to put a bit of a dent in the Germans game I think, but... Uh, well, we'll see what happens if the Germans uh, take it or not. Okay, so the British at least are starting to get on the table. Actually, uh, there's no point putting them on overwatch because it's the end of the turn at the end of the phase, so they will be coming off overwatch. So let's, just, let's see if they can get... Bloody hell, another two phases. Uh, so that's <laughs> another, another phase, double six. So now they've got a three and a three, so they are going to put that unit back on overwatch. Is there anybody else that they want to bring on? Yes, they're actually going to get with the other three. Uh, da, da, da. It's a junior leader and a senior leader. They'll bring on junior leader and a sergeant, I think. Uh, so they'll bring their sergeant on with the Lewis gun team. And they'll probably put that again on Overwatch, I would think. So here we are. This is the other uh, section, uh, well, team. Uh, of the, uh, well it's a junior leader brought on his section, his, his team so he's brought these, uh, Lewis Gun on and also the sergeant has joined them as well, stuck them on Overwatch and as I say I've used the other three to use their junior leader to put these back on Overwatch because that will have come off at the end of the turn anyway so let's see how many more, the British seem to be um, reacting a lot quicker than they did at Lewis in 1917 that's for sure, well let's see if that British look continues uh, so we've got a six this time on its own doing nothing 
Uh, a five is another chain of command points. That takes them up to five. That's pretty good. Uh, four senior leader. Two ones, which are teams. Uh, so what they could do is they could actually bring out their support team as well, their support Lewis gun, uh, and get that somewhere on the table. I think they're going to, to be honest, because that's that's just a team. Be uh, daft not to. So the second Lewis gun has appeared. The team uh, I put them near the sergeant, and what he's done, he's used that four to get them on Overwatch as well. So now we've got the section over here on Overwatch. We've got the uh, t uh, team and another uh, small team as well. Two Lewis teams over here, and then the section of rifles. So quite a lot of barrels pointed down this way here. The Germans are probably going to have to try to end a turn if they can, either through the dice rolls or through maybe a chain of command dice uh, to get those Overwatch off. It's going to be a tough one, this, for the Germans. Right, let's get over onto the Germans, see if they can actually do anything this turn. Uh, they're looking to get those... Oh, look at that, double six. I was just about to say it. Right, so let's have a look. We've got a one, a two, and a four. Mm, it's not brilliant, because they're still pretty far back at the moment, and they really need to be deploying and getting up uh, before they can do anything. Mm. Bit of a tricky one. I'm gonna have a little think about this one, I think. Not a particularly good turn for the Germans, that one, or that phase at least. Uh, but what they have done, they brought on a junior leader with his section, his Zug here. These guys, or group, should I say, these are the bombers. They're out of line of sight, so they can't be shot at at the moment. But I really I want to get these into the uh, trench up here. But as soon as they do, <laughs> they're just gonna get a ton of fire coming at them from those um, three Overwatch units up there. So it may be a waiting game for the Germans to uh, get their first chain of command dice or even hopefully uh, get a turn end with three dice, uh, three sixes or four sixes. But let's see what they get next because they do have the next phase. Okay, thinking on that, I said there's not a great deal they can do at the moment. Let's have a look, see what we got. Uh, we've got one six, so they don't retain the phase. They do get two fives though, which is two chain of command points. So that's good. And then they got four and a two, so that's a senior leader and a section. Now, phew, they've got one senior leader on the table, but once again, as I say, if they move, they do anything, there's no... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, they could at least move them, I think, around the side of the crater. I think that's probably the best thing they can do. All right, so we've actually got the first firing of the game. So the LMG team have worked their way to the edge of this crater. They can't be seen over here by the, the British over here, but they are firing at those uh, scouts, uh, their, their sentries. I should have done it with the other ones, really. I didn't think, but we're firing with the LMG and with the, uh, <coughs> the, the rifles. So rifles, they are over... Uh, close range, so they're hitting on fives and sixes. LMG, more ones, is white. If there's more ones and sixes, it jams. Let's have a look. Uh, there's one, one, yes, so it's jammed, but they have hit one, two, three, four hits in total on the British, I think. Yeah, just count those up. Yeah, so that LMG is jammed and also they've got, but they've caused four hits on those scouts. So let's have a see what happens. They're in heavy cover. Six is a kill, five is shot a kill and a shock uh, so does that break them no it pins them but it doesn't break them right well that's first blood to the Germans uh, they also just uh, to mention here as well they've also used that too to bring on uh, no they didn't actually sorry I was going to bring on a second section but I'm gonna wait with those because I've kind of got an idea of what I want to do with them just yet there's no point bringing them on just now because there's not much I can do to get forward the British let's see how many phases they end up with. Uh, they've got another five, which is a six, which is a chain of command dice. Then they've got a one, a one, uh, and two threes. So that's junior leader as well. Everybody's currently, I don't know, do we hold some of these back? Uh, I think they might just use that one to get their their scout team back. I think that's the, uh, the best thing to do, I think. Uh, and I think they're going to leave it to that. They're in a good position. There's not much point bringing anything on at the moment and just crowding stuff. So all the British have done is just moved their single sentry guy back. Now he's lost his mate. I'm just trying to get him back to the sergeant so he can reduce his shock and at least he become a rifleman, if nothing else, and probably join one of these teams over here. All right, well, back to the Germans. Let's see what we have here. <clears throat> Well, that's good roll. They've got three fives. So that is a full chain of command points. 
and then a four and a six. Six on its stones doing nothing. The, th the four is their senior leader. Mm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that up to a full chain of command point and what they're going to do is they're going to spend that chain of command dice and end the turn at the end of this phase. So what that does it takes all the British off overwatch however the Germans can't really do a great deal with that. Uh, they can move up their second section I think that's probably what they'll do with their, their big man. Uh, I think he's in his command range. I'll just check but I'm sure he is. Yes, I checked and that German big man was in 9 inches of the bomber team so he's basically made them move up. They just moved up to behind it. The, uh, uh, the the crater here, they're still out of line of sight. Meanwhile, because the Germans have spent that chain of command at dice, it's taken the British all off overwatch at the end of this phase. It means the Germans can't do anything for the rest of the phase, but uh, and it was quite expensive to spend that chain of command dice, but uh, this I think is probably the best use of it at this point because there were just too many tubes pointing down that uh, battlefield, I think. Okay, so over to the British. As I say, it was quite an expensive use of the chain of command dice, but very necessary, I think, in this point. I'm pretty sure I've got another double phase. So that's two sixes, another chain of command point as well. And then a one and a three. Uh, so they're just going to get their scout to move forward. I think that's what they'll do first of all. So I'll just do that now. So, so over here, the British sentry, he moved forward. Uh, he actually moved seven inches, just got to the bottom lip of the crater, which actually brought him into um, range of his, uh, the, this junior leader over here, who then used one of his activations to uh, get rid of his shock because he's currently out of line of sight of the, the enemy, but also put these back on so overwatch again so uh, they'd lost it but they're back on now then the british have got that second phase once again well, this is in defense i don't know it's well at this point it's still very early in the game i think it's not doing them a great deal but it is building up their chain of command points so they can use those at some points and that's the two and then we've got a four a four and two twos mm, their uh, senior leader is just too far away for the uh, for him to put anybody else on overwatch i think unless he moved their sergeant uh, he can put the other the other team on overwatch he's going to do that with a four and then he'll also order that uh their sentry to run across to them and then he's going to use a chain of command uh, one of his command points to put that un that guy into that team as well so he's just basically adding another rifleman to them so i'll do that off camera in a second it's not going to change anything but that's all the British are doing this turn so I'll go back to the Germans I'll just set that up now and I'll come back and I'll roll the German stuff so I did that off, off camera there's no point showing you because literally all it was was moving a figure and uh, you, you saw from last time what was happening with him so he's now joined those teams up there and they've both got the LMGs back on overwatch again can the Germans get them off? Uh, six and then two fives, so that takes it up to three. Uh, they need three more, really, for uh, to get that um, uh, to to be able to get them back off Overwatch again, don't they? Unless they start moving, but I don't know. No, they've got a three and a one there, which is not great. It's not really going to do much. Uh, they're kind of stuck behind that big um, crater at the moment. Uh, this this attack seems to be faltering, but right, yeah, I'm not going to do anything with them because there's nothing they can do. They need to build up that chain of command dice or hope for those triple threes or quadruple three, three uh, sixes. Sorry, uh, British and another two fours there, so that takes them up to another. They're getting loads of chain of command points, chain of command dice. Uh, then we got four, a four, and a four, so that's a sergeant, sergeant, and a lieutenant if they got them, but. They can't do anything with that because the sergeant has already done everything he can do. He could run across to the other trench and put the other guys on overwatch again. Uh, I don't think it's worth it. May as well wait for a three to come up to be honest. Leave him where he is. They've got two LMGs pointing so they're not doing anything with that turn. So back to the Germans. Uh, okay so they've got a double phase now and another th uh, th five which gives them a chain of command point. So that's two sixes and then they've got two twos. Not brilliant once again, because they can't get forward. They really, they either take a massive risk and just charge into those LMGs, or they just wait it out. And I think I'm more more willing to wait it out at this point. I've probably got maybe weighty numbers on their side, but 
no, let's wait it out. So their second phase, because hopefully they're going to get a couple of chain of command points extra. They've got another phase and two and three twos. If they didn't do anything with it last turn, I'm not going to do anything with it this turn. So they're just going to keep rolling these. <laughs> this is just going to be a, a, a rolling a rolling game, I think. Let's have a look. Next up, uh, another chain of command point. So that takes them up to five. Then they've got a six, which does nothing. And then they've got two ones and two twos. So again, they can't really... Well, you know, could bring on a flamethrower, but where are they are going to put it? Because it'll just get killed as it's advancing up that table. So that's the Germans' turn. That's all they're going to do. They really need to end that turn either with a dice roll or with their chain of command dice. But let's just see what the British do. The British are just sitting there, aren't they? So five gives them a chain of command point for us. And then we've got a three and a one and a one. So they're going to use that junior leader to put his section back onto Overwatch. But that's it. That's all they're going to do. Right, so let's go back to the Germans then. So back to the Germans. They've got another chain of command point, so that gives them a full chain of command. And then they've got a one, a two, a two, and a three. So, do you know what? They're still not going to do anything. The reason for this is because if they spent the chain of command dice now to end the turn, it would still give the British another turn and a chance to get them back on Overwatch. So they're going to hold off and they're going to wait till they've got a double phase. And then they're going to launch their attack, I think. So we're going back to the British. Sorry about this. This is a, 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 a long drawn out dice roll at the moment. Let's have a look. We've got five. So that's another chain of command dice for the British. That takes them up to two chain of command dice. Then we've got uh, a one, a four, a two, and a two. And again, they don't really want to bring anything on. So they're just going to sit and they're just going to wait. They are in a good position. There's literally no point putting more bodies on the table because they're just going to get shot. So we may as well keep them off. If they're not on the table, they can't be shot. So let's see what the Germans get. Now, if they get a double phase, they'll probably spend that chain of command dice. And no, they haven't got a double phase. <laughs> so if I didn't do anything with the dice results before, I'm not going to do anything with the dice results now. So that's just them over. Back right to the British. Let's have a look. They've got a double phase and another chain of command dice. And I'm running out of chain of command dice now, so I'm going to have to put, start putting a new one in. Uh, so that's it. That's And again, once again, they are not doing anything. This is a, a slow grind. Two more chain of command dice, but they don't get another uh, point. Sorry, they don't get another, uh, another phase. So let's have a look at the next one. Back to the Germans. They've got another chain of command dice. It's just a game of building up chain of command dice, but nothing else, nothing else they can do anything with. As I say, the Germans are waiting for those double phases. They don't seem to have got many. It's the uh, the British that have certainly got them. Well, earlier on in the game they did. Which, but, oh my God, the British are back on with that. another double phase. So let's just play that out. I mean, they could go and attack <laughs> another double phase. They could just attack the Germans. <laughs> But no, I don't want to. I want to keep them where they are. There's no point, you know. Uh, so they're just going to keep going again. This deadlock has got to break at some point, like probably November 1918. Right, a five turns out into a four, so they've now got basically two and a half chain of command dice, but that ends their double phase. So we go on to the Germans again. They got a six and a five that takes up their chain of command, but nothing else. As I say, I don't, I don't want to be spending those other points just unnecessarily. It's a waiting game. British. Uh, another chain of command dice, but nothing else. A six on its own does nothing. We don't want the British to have too many chain of command dice either. That's the other point. Uh, so I think they're going to have to do some moving at some point. To be perfectly honest, so let's have a look. Well, they've got two more chain of command dice, chain of command points. They, they will be spending all these at some point, but nothing else. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do here, to be honest. No, it's, it would be suicide to attack at this point. They've just got to wait it out. Back to the British. Nothing. The first time in ages. They've actually got nothing. So the Germans. 
bloody hell, finally, they've got double phase and two chain of command dice, and a two as well. So that actually uh, takes their chain of command up to two. So they're going to spend one of them, ignore this phase because there's nothing else they can do. But that takes all the British off Overwatch. So they are now going to see what their second phase brings for them. This may do something. Let's have a look. They've got another double phase and a four and a two. So that is pretty pretty perfect actually for what they want because they've now got their senior leader he can get those two sections to activate and do something and they want under no threat from the british apart from being interrupted okay so as the germans appear at the lip of the crater here they're going to be in hard cover they're going to get shot at by the british and they're using the rifles here because rifles are less they're not going to jam basically and i think there's going to be less bullets coming from over that end so they're basically interrupting with that chain of command point uh, chain of command dice hitting on fives and sixes uh, i think let me just check actually i didn't check the range they are yeah they're over 18 so we're hitting on fives and sixes so that's only two hits from the british rifles so the germans saving off six uh shocking on five uh four and a three so no effect well, the Germans know that they've got a second phase coming up, so what they're going to do is they're going to actually charge these up here as quick as they can. So they're going to take a shock for this because I want them to get as quick for... So this is still the um, senior leader, he's uh, the sergeant, well their lieutenant, uh, sorry, Phils, Phils Vel, Bel, Bel. he's got them to move forward and then he's also ordering these to run. And they are doing a 3d6 move. So let's see how far they get. Oh, that is good. <laughs> That's almost as far as I can get. 17 inches. So they're going to come round, basically around the corner of this, and get to about here. So let's get those stacked up. So then we're on to that German second phase. So that's getting them close to the action. And then they take that shock with them as well. So this is where we're at at the moment. British have still got that chain of command dice, so they can use that to interrupt if they like. Uh, the Germans have still got another one as well. They can use that for something else, but let's just see what they do immediately. Let's have a look. Uh, six, so they don't have another phase, but they have got a four, which is their senior leader. A two, a one, and a one. Right, let's have a think about this, because they might be using that chain of command dice to, to do something. So the British are once again using their chain of command dice to interrupt this German turn before they do anything, and they're firing once again at these. Fours up to hit with rifles. So we've got one, two, three, four hits, which is uh, not great out of eight rifles. Um, sorry, it was nine rifles because they've got their uh, corp firing as well. So these are actually in the open. Five, six of the kills, three, four is shot. So look, ooh, that's close. That was four shock. That, that could have been much worse. I was expecting a massacre there, but that has given them quite a lot of damage and it's probably not going to shift them far forward. Uh, but let's see what the Germans now do with the rest of their turn. Okay, the Germans have used chain of command point to bring forward this jumping off point to the front of the uh, crater, as it's in cover, and it's six inches behind their forward unit. Hopefully they're trying to get these a bit further forward. They've spent uh, the four on their uh, fifth fell bevel, and he has got these, he's going to get these to fire. We've got to unjam that machine gun first of all. Then he spent another of his activations to jump over to these guys. They've then spent their two and their one, turned it into a three for their, senior, uh, their junior leader here. He's reduced shock down to three for those. Then the first fell bubble has, is going to get, with his final activation, he's going to get them to fire with their grenades as well at the British in this trench. We're going to try and clear this trench out, see if we can get into it first of all, because there's two jumping off points in there. If they can get in there and shut those down, it's going to be quite nasty. But we're going to start first of all with the covering fire from the MMG. So it is jammed, so we need fives and sixes to unjam it. So first one, no. Second one. Six, yes, it's unjammed. So that means we get to fire with the final all five shots of it. And also they've got rifles as well down here. So again, more sixes than ones, and they are going to be jammed again. But everything is hitting on, uh, let me double check. I'm not sure what range we're at. Uh, 21, so we're actually hitting on fives and sixes anyway. Let's have a look. Uh, that one's cocked, so let me just quickly re-roll that. Six, there you go, so here was kind of cocked on a six anyway but hits are one uh two so there's no no more ones than sixes for the lmg so it's still on it's, it's not jammed 
and then that's hit. So that's four hits in total on those British in the trench. They are in heavy cover, so four hits on them. Six is a kill, five is shock. Let's see what happens there. We've got one shock on them, uh, which could have been a better result, but it is what it is. And then as our Fizzbell bubble charges in, he is then instructing them to fire their rifles and also uh, their grenades as well. There's uh, six men in there with grenades. So they uh, grenades hit as though they're in the open. So this could be quite good. We've got one rifle because they've got three shocks. So we're taking one off. There was only two rifles. I'm gonna fire with that first, four up and it hits. No, the rifle has missed. Now we're going for the bombs. So uh, these are hitting on fours up. Uh, and they've got 11 inch chain range, I check, 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 they are just in range. That's quite a lot of hits, it's easier to take out the misses. One, two, three, four misses on those. Ooh, this is going to be nasty. So we've got two, four, six, eight hits in total. So let's roll for those. So these are hits as though they're in the open. And there's only eight men in that section. Well, nine including the corporal. Uh, so let's roll these then. I'll just put this straight so I don't want to get any cock dice. Five, six of the kills. 3 4 is shot. So let's get uh, that's a 5 and a 5, so that's 2 kills and 2 shock. Well, that could have been much better. Uh, 4 no effect, so let's just turn that shock up to 3. Yeah, that shock all the way up to 3, but there's 2 kills in there. And let's see if there are either of those kills are on their corporal. So 1 or 2 it is. Uh, 2 yes it is. What's happened to him? Five, he is wounded. Uh, I think that's lightly wounded, I'll just check. But that means that's a bad thing's happened straight away for the British and another guy off as well. Uh, so let's replace that with a casualty. So let's just check that bad thing's happened table. So the bad thing's happened for a junior leader being wounded is a four, is do, 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 so yeah, minus one point. Well, that was a good couple of two, well, couple of phases for the Germans there, but let's just see what happens with the British phase next. They may get, uh, they may get the jump on them again. So let's have a look. We're rolling our dice. Oh, sorry, I'm rolling the German ones. Oh, they actually had uh, three, three sixes there. Uh, right, here's the uh, British rolling wrong dice. Right, so five. That gives them a chain of command dice again. So they can at least probably try to interrupt the Germans this time. The Germans have spent all theirs. Uh, so we spent that. Then we've got a one, a three, and two fours. Hmm, is it time to start bringing out some of these other units? Or just maybe firing at those ones that are in the open at the moment? Uh, we've got the sergeant. He can get those LMGs opening up, I think. I think it's probably time to start massacring those uh, those bombers in the in the open, I think. This German group might be the sacrificial lamb at this point, but let's just see anyway. So we're starting with the sergeant up in the uh, in, in the uh, corner over there. He is getting the two LMG teams to fire, plus there's uh, four rifles in there as well. So four rifles, two LMGs. They are going to be hitting, and we're, hit, we're firing at these ones in the open. There's no point firing anyone else. They are just over 18 inch away, so they're hitting on fives and sixes. It's not great. Let's do the rifles first, and then those two separate LMGs. First rifles hitting on fives and six as well. I say it's not a great shot, but that's two hits straight away, so let's put those there. Then we've got those two LMGs. The first one, I'm doing them separate because of the jamming. So the first one, uh, two sixes and only one one, so that's another two hits from those LMGs there at least. And then the second LMG, let's have another look. Uh, that one is jammed, so I'm just going to mark that as jammed, just while I remember. Uh, I can't remember which one it was, random, random jam. Uh, right, so we've got four hits on those Germans. These are in the open, so it's five, six of the kills, uh, three, four is shock. So look, so we've got one kill, no shock. Is that kill on either of their leaders? One, it is. Four, no it isn't, so it's just one of the chaps. I'll take one of the bombers off, replace that with a casualty. So that actually wasn't a great shot from those two. Now we've got the... Uh, we've got a three and a one, so they're actually going to change that three. Well, they're going to use the three and get these guys here firing as well. They've got, uh, so it's, it's their junior leader. He's only got one activation, so he can't reduce shock and get them to fire, but he can get them to fire. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rifles, minus one because of the uh, shock. So that's six rifles. These are hitting on fours up. And 
just checking if the Germans could interrupt this, they couldn't. So that's another four hits on those Germans. So let's just see if any of those land. So same again, they're in the open. Five sixes are kills, three, four shock. Uh, two kills this time and one shock. That takes them up to four shock, two kills. Is that kill on either of the leaders? One or two it is. No, it isn't. So that's two more. I'll take one of those guys and a rifleman. So they're taking a bit of hammer as you would expect since they're stuck out in the open at the moment, but um, it is the Germans' turn next. Well, actually, that turn didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. I thought there wouldn't be any of those men left. I mean, they've only taken three casualties out of eight, uh, but anyway, I suppose three is three. Uh, right, Germans are retaining that phase. They've got a, a five, and that's a chain of command point. They've got a three and a four, which is probably perfect for what their needs are at this point I think uh, they might even bring some more units on since they've got an, uh, another action right just before the Germans act the British are interrupting with their cha last chain of command dice and these guys are once again are going to be firing down here so they've got eight, eight rifles minus one because of the shock hitting on fours up so they're just trying to stop this German advance before it even starts so let's have a look one two three four five hits this time see how many of those actually land uh, these guys are in the open so once again five six is kills three four is shock so that's two more kills and another shock uh, see if that kill is on a leader or not uh, so put the shock on two kills one or two it is no it isn't so it's two more of them so we'll take off another uh, uh, they've only got bombers left, so just two bombers are off. Okay, that's kind of blunted the Germans' attack a little bit, but what they've done is they reduced shock with their sergeant, the Fel uh, Feldbubble. He's brought it down to three. Uh, they are pinned, though, because they were uh, they were on, on five, uh, and there's five men in there, so they were actually pinned. And they brought on their second assault group because they know they've got a second activation, another phase at least. So hoping for a double six on the next one at least so they can take on uh, another phase after that. But they brought these guys on another bombing group, see if they can get them in and do some damage with those as well. Uh, they can actually fire as well, but they're only firing with rifles, so let's do that. Uh, yeah, they're over 11 inches. So they may as well at least fire with their nine rifles at those British in the trenches. So we'll do that as well, so that's nine dice hitting on fours up. Uh, what have we got there? We've got one, two, three, four hits. British are in heavy cover, so they are saving on, uh, well, they are killing on six and uh, shocking on five. Let's have a look, we've got one kill, one shock. Is it on their junior leader again? Let's have a look, a one and it is. Uh, no it isn't so it's another rifleman one kill and one shot it's not too bad at least okay let's have a look at the next german phase oh it's another double six so that's another phase for them right so they've got a five gives them a chain of command point they've got a two and a one so that's a uh, a team or a section or a junior leader so they're going to use their junior leader three to get their next storm squad and they're going to try to go for this gap in the in the uh the, the the wire here so let's see how far they get then you're going to use 3d6 movement and he's going to then take off that shock uh, as they move because of that so let's have a look 12 14 inches let's see how far they get i so said we're going for this wire here okay that gets them to the slope the base of the trench here there is a definite gap in that wire uh, so i think that might actually put them within four inches of the uh, British so this may then very quickly let's just stand that fella up let's just check are they in four inches yes they are so this is then going to go into close combat right I'll do the additions and then we'll see what happens okay I've done the sums and it's pretty close actually the Germans have got 16 versus the British 12 uh, that's because the British are in heavy cover uh, but the British are shocked as well so let's just see what happens so the Germans are also using bombs as well so it's kind of evened it a bit fives and sixes are kills let's have a look uh, with six goals in shock so the German have killed one two Ooh, this one two three four with two shock whereas the british have killed one two three four five right so <laughs> right we're going to work this out then so we've got uh, just double check yeah there's no other kills in there 
So let's see, two shock on the British. Let's just put that up first of all. Let's sort the shock out. So we, otherwise, I remember. So it's uh, two for the Germans as well. Um, the Germans were actually defeated by one, so they're actually thrown back six inches uh, facing the enemy. So they'll take that. And they've also lost five men. So we're going to see if their junior leader is hit. I bet he will be. Let's have a look. Four, yes, junior leader is hit. What has happened to him? Let's have a look. Well, let's get rid of four troops first of all, just while I remember. So that's the, the German casualties off. And then what has happened to him? Two, he is knocked out until the end of the turn. So that's not good. So that's a junior leader wounded. Let's do that down there for a second. Now, the British, on the other hand, uh, they've taken four kills. Is one of those on their junior leader? Let's have a look. A one, yes it is. What's happened to him? A two, he is also knocked out till the end of the round. Uh, he is wounded anyway, so that's another wound for him. But he is now knocked out till the end of the round. And then they've also lost one, two, and three men as well as part of that. Right, so now we've got some bad things happen on both of these. I'm going to have to push these back six inches. I'll do that in a second. We've got two bad things happen. One for the Germans, one for the British. This is uh, Junior Lee's. Hang on a second, let's just count these up. We've got two, three, four men. The British are now pinned, though. Uh, the Germans are thrown back. They're not pinned, but they are thrown back. These are now pinned. They're not broken yet. One more, two more shock or one more kill, and they would be broken. But let's just have a look. We've got junior leader. So first of all, for the British, uh, junior leader wounded. First one up is a five. That is minus one point for the British. They're down to seven now. And then once again, the Germans, junior leader wounded. Uh, two, uh, no effect. They obviously don't like him very much. Uh, so they get thrown back. Uh, and that wasn't a particularly successful assault, was it? This uh, German attack is not going anywhere. Well, the Germans certainly butt off a bit more than they could chew there, didn't they? But they've still got a couple, well, they've still got a fresh section left with an LMG. Let's just have a look, see what happens. Their next phase, six does nothing on its own. Uh, they've got one, two junior leaders and a four senior leader. Mm, not a bad mix. Maybe it's time for a flamethrower to come out, who knows? Right, so I've got a bit of a complicated move here, first of all. First three is the junior leader here is reducing shock. So he's taking them down from uh, three down to to two so that's all they're doing over here i'm using the other three to get this junior leader to fire with the lmg at the remains of that british section over there try and break them at least so we're going to do that with the lmg then i have i'm not done it in sequence but the uh our fell phil verbal fell verbal is going to run across here he has then also reduced one shot from them and then he's going to get those four remaining three bombers one rifle to fire once again over here so there's going to be quite a lot of fire coming in those british so we're going to start with the lmg section first of all so these are hitting on fives and sixes given their range uh there's more ones and sixes for the lmg no there isn't there's one six and one 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 so that's one two three four five and six hits that's pretty good going actually well that fell bubble might get them to fire at somebody else but depends what happens here so we've got six hits but the british are in heavy cover so they kill on a six um, shock on a five but they only need a couple of shock on them to make to break that section at this point i think yeah they they are currently on they've got four men in there they're on six so if they hit eight shock or if they lose another man then uh, they might be running well actually there you go there's two shock so that actually breaks that unit so they are going to run uh they will run back six inches and also uh two d6 how far away from that edge of that table are they that's a question uh they are currently eight inches let's call it nine inches because of the trench so they're going to fall back uh, 66, that's uh, 2d6 plus 6 inches. So if they get double one, they're going to be on the edge of the table, otherwise they're routed off. So 10, <laughs> 16, so they are gone. So that is a unit breaks, well, section breaks, and also a junior leader routing from the table as well. So that's two bad things happen for the British. That was some good shooting from the Germans. So let's do those first of all. Uh, section breaks, so we'll roll for that. 
a six. Oh God, that's the worst it could be. Two off there, so that brings them down to five. Then we've got junior leader routes from the table, and this is always pretty bad when a leader runs off. Uh, a three is us, another two points off. That brings them right down to three. So they now are losing their uh, command dice, and that's cleared that trench, to be honest. Well, they could always put somebody else in there, but good for the Germans, they've cleared the trench. So what we're going to do now is they're going to change their fire and they're going to fire over here. So I'll just uh, set the cameras up, get rid of that British section and see where we go from there. Well, to be honest, it's not as good as I was expecting because they're just out of range of the bombs. They're only going to be firing four rifles, uh, but they are hitting on fours up. So uh, two hits and they are once again, they're in heavy cover because they're in that crater, a reinforced crater. So six of the kills, five uh, is shock. So look, so we've got one kill no shock and is that kill on the junior leader or the sergeant so look five four no it isn't so it's just one of the riflemen well the british don't have a great deal of stuff left they're only rolling three dice now so let's just see what they get for that uh two fours sergeants uh lieutenants and a three a two is a section so at least they could uh produce a section uh, and do some uh, bombing at least. Okay, in the first instance we got the bombers, they just appeared back on this parapet here and they are chucking raining bombs down on these guys. Here, of course, they are fours and sixes, uh, fours up. They are also, they're gonna be hitting in the open because they, they're in the open anyway. They've also got a couple of rifles in there so they're firing them as part of it. So everything's hitting on fours up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five hits on those Germans there. As I say, they are in the open. Ooh, this could go the <laughs> not the way of the Germans. Let's just see. Uh, so uh, four, uh, threes and fours are shock. So there's only three shock on them. Wow, uh, they got away with that incredibly lightly. Now they are then using their four to get their sergeant to fire the LMG and the rifles over there. So the first one is just going to be the LMG and the rifles. There's two rifles and the LMG, and then the other one is is jammed. So he's going to try to get that unjammed but let's see how we get on so the LMG hasn't jammed uh, these are hitting I don't actually know what range they're at I think they're at less than 18 let's have a quick check yes they are so hitting on fours up so we've got one two three four five hits this time and once again these guys are in the open so that's uh, six as a kills what did I say it was five hits can't remember in all the in, we'll go with five hits <laughs> uh, so that's five hits five six of the kills that's two three kills and two shocks so that takes them up to the shock is that kill on a uh, one of their leaders uh, one or two it is no it isn't it's just two of the blokes we'll take two of those off I'll be running out of corpses soon uh, so that's how they are on six shock so they're pinned uh, like the other ones over here. So both of those are now pinned in the open. Now we've got that other LNG. This one is jammed. So we're gonna have to try and unjam it. So fives and sixes and it unjams. First one, no. Second one, no. Next one, no. Third one, no. Fourth one, no. Last one, no, it's still jammed. It's obviously covered in mud from the crater. Feels a little like the tide may have turned against the Germans. They've still got all their force morale of 11 though. They haven't actually lost anything yet. So they're doing all right. Let's just see. Two fives, that is another chain of command points. That takes me to four. And they've got two threes and a two. Mm, not brilliant, not brilliant, but it's probably quite useful for getting some shock down if nothing else. So they're using uh, their junior leaders the threes to get rid of some shock so he's brought shock down by one this guy over here no he can't actually because he is uh, he's knocked out isn't it I forgot about that so they're still on six uh, this guy has reduced their shock by one and then he's firing with them there's only four of them firing uh, and they're halfing it because they're pinned so they're hitting on uh, fours up let's just see if they do anything three and three no no effect so they're going to use that two to get that LMG and the rifles firing as well. Uh, yes, that's, I think that's a sensible thing to do. So just count up how many rifles we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rifles in total, plus the LMG. And they are firing at the bombers on the parapet, firing over the heads of everybody because they're, they're all on a higher level. So let's just give it some. Uh, it's not more ones than sixes, uh, but they need fives and sixes to hit. So they. LMG hasn't jammed, they've got one, two, three, four, 
five hits on those, just double check that. Yeah, five hits on the British on the parapet. So if you watch all sixes, <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, so six is the kills, five is shock. Uh, nothing, no shock, no kills. Well, that was a pretty unsubstantial turn, wasn't it? Let's just see what the British do with their three dice. Uh, a one, junior leader, junior leader. Uh, so two junior leaders and a one, so they could send that into the sergeant and also those bombers again. Maybe they could pull this back. Right, first of all, let's go with the bombers here. They're just going to chuck them in, in amongst these guys here. Uh, hitting on fours up. Let's have a look. We've got one, two, three, four five hits seems to be pretty average doesn't it throughout uh, this game so far so five hits these are all in the open uh, so we'll roll them again six five six of the kills three four shock so that's two more shocks so that is taking them over the edge actually i think that has broken them uh, but let's have a look and see what these kills do as well so yeah that's taken them to eight so they are broken uh, but they've also got one kill as well is that kill on one of the leaders a one and it will be let's have a look six no it isn't so it's another bloke off and then they are going to be running away again god these uh germans are not doing very well let's see how far they run away 2d6 plus six so that is uh five and six that's 11 inches so that is actually a bad thing's happened for the germans let's just get them out of the way so we know that happens so that is section breaks. So bad things happen first of all for them. Uh, a three on a section breaks is uh, that's two points off. Uh, so that's their first force morale hit. I'm not surprised to be honest at this point. <laughs> then we're going to turn that three and the one into a four to the sergeant. He is going to get those two LMGs to fire. One of them is jammed still. They're both going to be firing at this. Well, first one is going to be firing at this sec. These this guys, these guys here, trying to wipe them out and kill the officers if we can. Two rifles with it, with also LMG, and the other one may switch. This one's only uh, within 18 inches. These are just over 18 inches, so it's easier to hit these. Fours up. Are there more ones and sixes for the LMG? No, there isn't. And how many hits we got? One, two, three, four, five hits. <laughs> Averaging out across the entire game, so that's five hits on those once again in the open five six is well actually they're pinned so they should be in light cover i should have done that before but they were grenades as well that were coming in so actually yes they're they're pinned so they are they're uh, they're hugging the ground so that means there's going to be six is a kill four five is shock uh bloody hell <laughs> i don't think we're going to need that shock that that, that uh, shock um one kill uh, two kills sorry and also one shock so let's just put it on anyway uh, so two kills, so one of them has to be on the junior leader or the other guy, so the shock disappears at least, so that's that's a benefit, isn't it? Uh, but So they've lost one guy and the other one has to be on one of the uh, officers, so let's just see. One or two, one to three is a junior, four to six senior. Four to six is a senior, that was almost on a one. Let's see what happens to him. Six. He is uh, wounded, knocked out till the end of the turn. Uh, so that's no, he's lightly wounded. So his uh, his his actions are reduced. But that is also another bad thing's happened for the Germans. So let's just see what that is. Uh, and this is a senior leader wounded. A five on a senior leader wounded is uh, another point off. So they're down to eight now. Then we've got that other LNG. So I'm going to get that to try to unjam. So six chances and needs fives and sixes so first one yes it's unjammed so we can fire a full burst and they are actually just going to fire at these two guys why not silly not to them four up uh so we've got the the course two hits so two hits on those two we're going to see where those hits land uh because they're going to be all over the place so again one to three it's on the junior four to six it's on the senior 50 percent chance of each uh, so actually one on each then. So let's see what happens to both of those. Right, first of all, junior leader. Uh, roll that dice. One, he's killed. Uh, the second one is on the senior leader. What happens to him? Four, he is wounded for a second time. He's got a uh, command initiative of three, so that brings him down to one. 
but that is two bad things happened once again. So we've got junior leader wounded first. No, it's junior leader killed first of all. Five. Uh, that's two points off. They are tumbling, and then also a senior leader wounded once again. So let's see what happens with that. Four is that's another point off there. Now down to five. And after all that, they managed to get up to the trenches, clear them, and now they're just getting absolutely battered. Well, after a few good turns, the Germans, it certainly seems to have turned against the, the Germans. Let's just see what happens with the rest of their turn, at least. So five, chain of command point. Then they've got a one, a two, a three, and a four. So a little bit of everything. One, two, three, four, five, all the way through. Right, the Germans have decided the discretion is a better form of valour. So they've used their junior leader to get these back into the trench in our line of sight, because uh, they're still pinned. They've also moved a uh, used the four to get their uh, Feldwebel to out of line of sight again behind this crater. And then they're using their final three, a two and a one they put together. And this is going to fire at those bombers on the parapet. Kind of got a bit of an idea of what they want to do once they get a chain of command dice, but let's just see what happens in this turn. So they're hitting on uh, fives up. Don't think this is going to be very effective. We've got more ones and sixes. No, they haven't. So we've got one, two, three, four. That was a five. Six hits on those British on the parapet. So let's just clear that tray out there. And then got six hits on them. So this is killing on a six, shocking on a five. Uh, so just one shock. So back to our British. Uh, two threes and a four. Well, they can do some firing. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but they can at least give it a go. Okay, there's a possibility the British doing a bit of damage here. So they've brought on their last section, which is the rifle grenadier guy. There's only one of them, and he's got uh, one, two, three, four uh, rifles with a corporal. So they're going to appear, and they are going to fire at these. So the rifle grenade, grenade is hitting on fives and sixes, as are the rifles, but that reduces cover by one, so it becomes light cover, uh, but not for the rifles. So this is the first shot. So this is their three. So they've got one, two, Three hits just from the rifles, not from the rifle grenade though. So let's roll those three hits. Six is a kill, five is shock. Uh, one shock on the Germans. They're kind of the British are at a point where they've kind of got to keep up the pressure. They they could potentially pull this back, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so that was the. They're just going to pour as much fire into the uh, the Germans at this point. Then they're going to use the bombers over here, the six of them with rifles, they're doing the same thing, firing fives and sixes. Let's see, so that's three hits at this time. Uh, these are actually above the odds at this point, they're obviously crack shots aren't they these chaps, so uh, three hits, six is a kill, five, six shock, so it's another shock, uh, pecking away at some at least. And then they've also got the LMG because they're using the four with the sergeant. He's going to be firing with that LMG and two rifles and then the separate LMG as well. So they're putting as much fire down on them as possible. So the LMG hasn't jammed, uh, but has caused three hits. Uh, no hits from the rifles. So let's just roll for that first of all. And these are unjammed LMGs at this point. So six of the kills, five, six, six shocks. So that's a kill. Is it on the junior leader? No, it isn't. So it's just one of the fellas. Uh, unfortunately, I've got no more German bodies left. Uh, and uh, so then that was the uh, the LMG fire. And then the other LMG, the, uh, the single one, let's have a look, same again, fives, uh, fives and sixes to hit. No hits, but uh, two ones and no sixes. So that is jammed again. It obviously needs to be cleaning that, don't you, Tommy? Let's see what the Germans get. Okay, so they got a five, which is chain of command point. They got a three and two ones. That's a reasonably good mix, to be honest. The Germans are using that chain of command dice that they've just been built up to launch a surprise attack. So uh, they're leaping out from the forward jumping off point. They managed to get to here 12 inches away. They're then using their uh, flamethrower to burn the uh, rifle grenadiers here as much as they can. So this is going to be 12 D6. Uh, hitting on fours up, it uh, there's, ignores all cover and doubles all shock. So this may be a game changer. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to wait inside the Germans just yet. But let's just see, uh, and then they can either stay on the table or disappear. Let's have a look. Hitting on fours up. Uh, there's quite a few more than fours. One, two, three, four, five hits. 
So as we say, we're basically ignoring all cover. So that is hitting them in the open. Uh, I'll use the wrong colour die, so rolling uh, blue for the Germans there, but red for the British now. So ignoring cover, five and six is the kills, three, four shock, all shock is doubled. Right, we've got one, two, three kills, one shock, so that is two shock in total, three kills. Is that on their junior leader at all? Uh, let's have a quick look, one to three and it, it is. Uh, no it isn't, so that's three of the men are killed uh, and that has pinned them because I think there's only, oh no there's six men in there and they've got two shock. We haven't finished yet because the uh, Germans over here they're reducing shock down to two with their junior leader and then they are getting the, using the two to fire with the section and the LMG again at those rifle grenadiers, see if they can finish them off. Oh yeah, I'm going to take the uh, flamethrower off because they're going to disappear off because uh, they won't be around for long if they didn't. Right, let's see, we're hitting on fives and sixes. This is more ones and sixes than uh, that one is cocked. I'll just re-roll it. Three, it's a miss. So we're looking at fives and sixes. There's not more ones and sixes. So we're looking at fives and sixes to hit. One, two, three hits. It's not. It could have done with a few more than that. So let's just see. Three hits and six is a kill. Uh, five is shock. Uh, so no effect. Well, the Germans were hoping their terror weapon would do much more damage than it actually did. <laughs> they didn't. So let's see what the British get for theirs. Uh, six does nothing. Five gives them a chain of command point, and a one is a team. So they do have a LMG team, so they're just going to fire with that, I think. So they've got the LMG over there, which is kind of it's it's jammed. It's the only one that can fire. But let's just see what happens. See if they're going to jam it. Three, no. Six, yes, it's unjammed. So you get five five shots. Hitting on fives and sixes. One hit. And six is a kill, five is shock. Nothing, no effect. So back to the Germans again. Let's see what we get this time. So a five gives them a chain of command point. Six does nothing for them. They've got a one, uh, a one, two, and a three. Right, the Germans have brought, finally brought out their final section, which is the LMG section. They've come into the crater, so they're still in heavy cover at least. They've also brought on their Lieutenant as well. He has reduced their shock and then he's going to get them to fire. But before that, these guys are going to be firing anyway as a section. So we're just going to start with them uh, with the LMG at those rifle grenadiers, hitting on fives and sixes. Uh, this is not really how I expected the game to go, to be honest. Uh, they've got more sixes than ones uh, in the LMG fire, so it's not jammed. They've got one, two, three, four, five, and six hits in total on those rifle grenadiers. They should really be running about in the trenches at this point, but that's where we are. So those six hits on the... Uh, there's only three of them in there. Uh, six is kills, five is shock. That's a lot of shock. That's three shock and one kill. Is that kill? I think that's going to break them. Is that kill on their junior leader? One of it is. No, it isn't. So it's just one of the guys. I'll take one of them off because he would have picked up the rifle grenade anyway. And then three shock on top of that puts them up to five, which is yes, they have now broken. So they will run. Let's see how far they go. They are, I think, eight inch away from that table. Nine, I think they are. So six inch plus two D6. Nine inch. I'm gonna. That's. They're off the table. Let me just double check it. Uh, yes, they are off the table. So that's another bad things happen. Right. That is section breaks and also uh, junior leader routes off the table as well. So first of all, section breaks. This could actually finish the game. Let's have a look. Uh, section breaks. One is only one point off their force morale. Brings them down to two. But this this could be the big one. Junior leader routes from the table. A two. No, it's down to one, so they are actually down on one on their force morale. They are literally holding on by their fingernails at this point, but they are now gone. They've disappeared off the table. Uh, and then, right, so then the other machine gun is going to be firing over to the other side now, to the other section, the bombers over there, what remains of them. So in this section we've got the LMG and we've also got one, two, three, four, five, six, six rifles firing from them uh, if they get rid of them this will be a, <laughs> a bloody miracle but let's just see uh, hitting on fives and sixes that should have finished the game there making them run away but never mind uh, fives and sixes are hits 
Uh, there's more ones and sixes. Yes, there's more ones and sixes on the LMG. So that has now jammed. Uh, but they have hit with one of them. Uh, one, two, three hits on those British. Now they're going to be incredibly lucky to actually do anything to these. I think they've got one shock and one, two, three, four, five, six people in there. So what do we say? Two, three hits. Can't remember. Anyway, five, one shock. So not, not really done a great deal. So the British have lost a jumping off point. Uh, once they go down to two, they lose one. So that's that's gone. That's off the table. And uh, they are down to one dice as well. I think. I think they're down to one dice. Sorry, down to two dice, not one dice. So they're only rolling two. A two and a two is two sections or a senior leader. I did think about bringing the lieutenant on and reducing shock, but I decided to go with the sergeant instead. He's getting those LNG teams to fire again. So the first LNG team over here at the German LNG team hitting on fives and sixes. They haven't jammed. Uh, and they've got one, two, three, four hits in total. They've got two rifles as well in there. So those four hits, six of the kills, five shock. Uh, just one shock on the Germans. This may turn into a bit of a desultory long range firefight at this point. Then we've got our second LNG, but it is currently jammed uh, from last turn. So we're gonna have to see if we can unjam it. So first one, no, second, yes. So it can fire five shots. So look, five, six is a hit. <laughs> He's hit with four of them, blimey. Uh, so let's see what happens there. Six of the kills, five is shock. And we got two kills and a shock. So that's bang, bang. And there is also a senior leader in there for the Germans. Uh, so is he being hit? One or a two he has. Uh, yes, well, a leader has been hit. So that was two kills. So we'll just get rid of one German first of all. And then, uh, is it one to three is junior leader, four to six senior leader. Uh, junior leader is one. So what's happened to him? And what he's killed outright. So that's another bad thing's happened for the Germans. Right. Blimey, uh, they're currently on five. Junior leader killed. Let's have a look, I'll roll that in the tray. A two is minus one on their force morale. So that takes them down to four. They're now on four dice rather than the uh, their five. So a little bit of sniper shooting there. Right, let's see what the Germans can do with their four dice. Uh, probably not a great deal, but who knows. Double six, they retain the phase, three and a one. Uh, so that's senior, a senior leader or a junior leader and a, and a team. Right, we're using the senior leader. He's going to drop uh, their shock over here. And then we are going to go, he's going to get both of these sections to fire. So the first one, full section, firing at those uh, rifle at the bombers. So hitting on uh, fives and sixes. And let's have a look. Uh, they've got more ones and sixes. So their gun is jammed for the time being at least, but they have done caused a couple of hits. Let's just see how many they've got. They've got one, two, three, four, and five hits on the British, first of all. So let's see what they actually do to anybody. I did think about bringing on the flamethrower, but no, it would have been stuck in the open. Uh, it's a bit, a bit dangerous at this point. So let's just see. Uh, six of the kills, five is shot. Two shock, so that takes them up to four. They are Oh, they're not uh, not even uh, not even pinned yet. Let's just put that shock on first of all. But then we got the other guys over here. Now these have got one, two, three, four rifles. So let's just separate those out. Four rifles. They've also got that LMG, but it is currently jammed. So let's just see if they can unjam that first of all before we start. So fives and sixes. No. 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 Yes, so three shots from the LMG uh, along with four rifles at the same target. Again, we're just trying to break them at this point. Fives and sixes are hits, one hit. More ones and sixes on the LMG, so it's jammed again. So that's just one hit on those guys. Six is a kill, five is shock. One, no effect. The Germans now have their second phase though. And the six is nothing. Two fours, two senior leaders and a one is uh, a team and as you expect they're going to do exactly the same again so we'll start with a bigger uh, bigger team so bigger section so unjamming first of all six yes it's unjammed so they can fire a full six plus their seven rifles he's also reduced taking shock as well off that other take that other section so these guys are hitting on fives and sixes 
There are once again more ones and sixes on that LMG, so it is once again jammed, but it has caused a couple of hits. One, two, three, four in total, including those rifles, so that's four hits. Uh, let's just clear those dice out, and we've got four hits, six is a kills, five is shot, two kills, and no shock. Is it on a junior leader? Let's just have a look. Uh, one or two it is, no it isn't, so it's uh, two on the on the guys, has that actually caused them to do anything? No, they are four for four, so they're actually, they are pinned actually. Um, so yeah, they're, uh, I don't think they're going anywhere unfortunately for them. And then we've got the second uh, bunch of guys firing, and this time these ones are firing with that LMG. Once again, it is jammed, they're obviously underwater or something. So first one, no, second one, no, third one, no, fourth one, no, fifth one. No, six one, no, so it's still jammed. Uh, and then they've got four rifle shots. So let's at least get those done. You never know, it could be lucky, might be a sniper. Uh, two hits, two hits on the British, six is kill, five is shock, uh, neither. Right, British with two dice, five, chain of command point, and a two is a section. So that might be their bombers, I think, what's left of them. No, it's not, they're gonna use the LMG up in that crater firing once again over here so let's just see uh, fives and sixes are hits uh, they don't have more ones and sixes so they're on jam and that's four hits that is above the odds these are these are the men of the match at the moment I think uh, they're doing some right damage uh, so they're hitting on uh, sixes of kills five six uh, five is a shock two kills and a shock well wow. right let's just see see where that those those cool kills go uh, one two it's on the Senior, no, it's not on the uh, senior. You said uh, junior leader's dead anyway, so two more of those guys are gone. And that was a British turnover, pretty good one. Uh, Germans, though, they are literally hanging on, aren't they? Six does nothing on its own, two fours, and a two. So that's senior leader and also the um, a section. Okay, so they use the senior leader to bring up their injured sergeant, and their second senior leader, the senior senior leader, he's going to reduce that shock and then get the two sections to fire once again. So the first one is firing with seven rifles, but also that LMG, which is currently jammed, as is the other one. So let's just see if they unjam, first of all. They're getting out of the bombers. Yes, they've unjammed straight away with a six. So let's fire again, see what they get. Uh, they, again, they've got more ones and sixes, so it's hit again, but they need fives and sixes. One, two, three hits in total. That's not a good portend for what's to come. Uh, so let's see, six is kill, five shot. Well, that's a shock and a kill. Is that kill on their senior junior leader? One or two it is. Yes, it is. What's happened to him? This could end the game. So look, four, no, he's wounded, but a wounded junior leader, if they get a one or a two now and there are bad things happen, uh, the game carries on. If otherwise, it's game over. Let's just have a look. One or a two is what the British are hoping for. Five. No, a five on a junior leader wounded is minus one point. Brings the British right down to zero. Their force morale collapse. He gets up, stuck through the head and everybody else pretty much melts away. So, game end. This is where it ended. This is where it looked like. This is the, the follow-up. Uh, that junior leader in the bomber section, getting slotted through the head. That was enough to break the British morale and everybody started falling back. Uh, the German there, high line, well, you can kind of see it really with the corpses. Uh, they got up to the trench edge and actually started attacking into it. Uh, they'd only got this far with the other section over here, really. Um, and yes, I mean, they pushed up and they were in this crater. They were just basically bogged down in this crater. It turned into a bit of a long range firefight mainly because the British were able to get those Lewis guns out pretty quick and into a very good position, I think. Uh, had they not done that, that flank might have been a bit open. The Germans could have pushed down that way, I think. It's a bit open, though. That's a problem. But the plan with the Germans was really to get as far forward as possible and then drag up a uh, jumping off point, which they managed to do from here. I think it was about round about here. Pulled it forward to there, which gave them not as big a jumping off place to get up here it was just enough space to do an ambush with the uh with that flamethrower 
Had they got another chain of command dice, they probably would have done another ambush and jumped out again and then done the same thing and uh, disappeared off because it didn't probably didn't cause as much damage as I was hoping it would have done. But the British defence was incredibly tenuous, uh, t tenacious, so I say not tenuous, ten tenacious. They really held on in this trench uh, and you can see by the amount of corpses that are in there how many were killed. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine or so. I mean, a couple of the units ran off, it was the, I think the rifles ran, but I think the men of the match by far were these guys over here with the sergeant, as always, backbone of the British Army, uh, with the two Lewis teams just raining fire down on the Germans and halting, entirely blocking off this entire uh, open area here. The Germans did quite well I think. I don't know, would it have been better to bring on this, this second section earlier, get these both into position here, you know, firing across this open area while the bombers went in? Was it too early to attack? I think, I think uh, just waiting got enough, got, got, got too much for me, and I, I thought, well, let's just go in for an attack. If you've got a double phase, use it and try and get as close as you can. I mean, they got pretty close and they did quite a lot of damage early on, uh, but it would have probably been better if they got another section out, I think. But that's the vagaries of this. Let's just have a quick look at casualties. I mean, very heavy casualties on both sides. Uh, all these that are in there, apart from the scouts. The lieutenant never came on. Scouts never made it on for either side. But uh, the British lost full section of rifles. Uh, the full section of rifle grenadiers. Well, you know, remains of it. A couple of men from their bomber section. And then also one from the Lewis gun section as well. Meanwhile, the Germans lost an entire assault group. Uh, over half of the other two as well. I mean, you can see they really were pushing it up. And yeah, the question is, you know, the Germans ended on force morale of four, British, as you can see, straight down to zero. I did think about me maybe waiting again uh, until the Germans had got another chain of command dice. But would the British have counterattacked? <laughs> Uh, I mean, the Germans have captured the position. They've done what they were supposed to do. They've they've cleared the field. Uh, they just didn't actually get into the trenches. So there'll probably be some questions asked, I think, at uh, at tea time later on. Right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. A uh, thrilling game of chain of command, First World War. Um, let me know in comments if you want to see more of these. I love playing it in the First World War, and it's good to have something slightly different as well, I think. Uh, you know, a different challenge, different tactical challenge as well, especially on these kind of landscapes that were uh, that kind of summed up the, the fighting around uh, Ypres in 1917, these battered, empty landscapes. If you have enjoyed it and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button, uh, leave me a comment, uh, check out Patreon, also check out channel membership if you want to help keep the lights on here at Steel Towers and I will see you in the next Storm of Steel video.